Hi everybody, welcome to part three of these modules on graphs and statistics. Uh, these modules are designed specifically for workplace tutors and managers uh, working with employees in the workplace. This particular module is going to look at three things. Uh, we're going to further explore statistical tools. Uh, in the last session we looked at working out the mean, the median and the mode and uh, I also left you with a, a problem to work on. We're going to look at the answers for that. We're also going to look at uh, measures of spread, which are the other side of the coin for measures of the middle. And finally, we're going to calculate and graph the interquartile range of some data. Uh, this is really interesting, and uh, if you enjoyed the previous uh, module, this really is the other side of the coin in the, in the final part of it. The problem I left you with uh, was relating to the performance of two pack sheds uh, working in the fruit industry. And what I asked you to do was compare the two pack sheds using statistical methods, and in particular the mean, the median, and the mode, and work out the answers. So the answers to pack shed one, certainly the answers I got were that the mean for pack shed one was six, the median was six in the mode is five and six. Now if you got different uh, results than that, one of us is wrong and uh, I think that you should let me know. Suggest, uh, well I suggest you check your working and if I've got it wrong please let me know. Pack shed two I worked out as the mean 6.4, the median was seven and the mode was three, seven and eight. I also concluded that pack shed 2 appears to be performing better based on these three measures of the middle. And uh, I understand there's some contention around that uh, given the lower performance from some of their days. And so we're going to look at whether uh, measures of the middle are the most appropriate tool to compare these two on. Measures of spread. We've looked at measures of the middle. Measures of spread are how far apart the data is, how spread out it is. And what you'll discover is that measures of the middle, a lot of the information that you receive um, via the media, for example, they might talk about average wages, uh, average household income, the average price of uh, real estate or houses, <coughs> is really meaningless without knowing some other measures of the statistics, in this case measures of spread. So we're going to look at two of these, one of them is the range and then the interquartile range and I'm going to leave you to explore standard deviations and uh, that could be a really great adventure uh, looking through the internet and trying to work out exactly how to work out the standard deviation. So finding the range, the range is simple the range is found by subtracting the minimum value from the maximum value. So the formula is max minus min equals the range. So for example, our data from pack shed 1 is 4556679. You simply take the smallest value from the highest value. The highest value is 9, the lowest value is 4. 9 minus 4 equals 5. So therefore the range of this data is 5. And I'll leave you to work out what the range of the other pack shed is and I think you'll begin to see there's a bit of a difference. The interquartile range is the next piece of data. Uh, the interquartile range has become uh, used more often and is a great way of describing data where measures of the middle are not so appropriate. I have a question for you just to get you thinking. How many cuts does it take to divide one plank of timber into quarters? There's your plank of timber, a nice blue plank. Uh, if you could only make vertical slices, how many cuts will it take to make it divide into quarters? And the answer is three. One, two, three. You'd simply make three slices and then you'd have four pieces of timber. Finding the interquartile range is the same. The interquartile ranges are simply the numbers that fall at each of those cuts. So you're trying to identify in the data where you'd make those three slices.
So let's have a look at pack shed one. Four, five, five, six, six, seven, nine. We want to find where we would make those three slices to cut it into four parts of data. Uh, in the previous module, I had mentioned there's a formula for working out the median. We're going to have a look at that formula now. It's really simple. Uh, to find the median, which is the middle number, and you can probably see which number you think is the middle number just by looking at that data. Uh, you can count in from both sides. You might have done this at school. So you would count in from both sides until finally you arrived at the middle number. But there's a far more sophisticated way of doing it. Uh, and counting in from both sides is uh, very ineffective when the data begins to grow. Imagine you had 10,000 pieces of data and you wanted to count in from each side. It would be horrific. So the formula is simple. You count how many pieces of data you have. And in this case, we have 7. And you just add 1 to it. 7 plus 1 is 8, and you divide that by 2, that gives you 4. And then you simply count in 4 numbers from the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6 is our median. So, just to go over that again, you want to find the median, You simply, which is the middle number. You simply count how many pieces of data you have, in this case there's 7, add 1 to it, and then divide it by 2, and that will give you the number. Now we can do this again because you can see that 6 is where we make our first slice, and we want to know where those other two slices will be. Now we know on the left of the 6 we have 3 pieces of data, so we use the same formula again. 3 plus 1 is 4, divide it by 2, and we get 2. And then we simply count in 2 numbers from the left. 1, 2, and there it is, it's number 5. And we repeat the process for the numbers that are on the right of the 6. So you can see there are 3 numbers on the right of the 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. Divide that by 2 and we get 2. We just count along 1, 2, and it's 7. So there are 3 slices, our 3 pieces of data. And these are called our interquartile ranges. So quartile 1 is 5, quartile 2 is 6, quartile 3 is 7. Pack shed 2. Uh, you can work through this again if you like and have a go at working out exactly the interquartile range for pack shed 2. And if you look at it very carefully, you can see where those slices are going to be. Quartile 1 will be, oh, quartile 2, sorry, we're starting in quartile 2. Sometimes it's the easiest or easier to start straight from the middle. So in this case, quartile 2 is 7, quartile 1 is 3, quartile 3 is 8. And that's it. That's how you work out the interquartile range. Once you have your interquartile range, there's some great things you can do. One is that I like to do is get uh, a piece of graphed paper and just get learners to begin graphing this uh, data in the form of a plot box or a box and whisker and uh, really easy to do and it gives a great visual representation of the data. So I'll show you how to do this for pack shed 1. Pack shed 1 you can see we've got the full range of data at the top and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a vertical line for several pieces of data. The first pieces of data I'm going to put in are around the range. So you can see that pack shed 1 the lowest value is a 4, so I simply put a line in where the 4 is. My highest value is 9, so I put a line where the 9 is. And then I go straight to my interquartile ranges. Quartile 1 is 5, quartile 2 is 6, quartile 3 is 7, and I simply put a rectangle around that. Put connectors on the other data, and there it is represented. And so at a glance, the plot box shows us that data. We can see immediately where the median is, we can see where the outliers are, and we can also see that it has symmetry. Now symmetry is a great thing, and it will either be positively or negatively weighted. In this case, it's completely uh, symmetrical, and you can see that they have some great days and some poor days there, uh, and you might actually also be familiar with seeing this running vertically. Let's have a look at how pack shed 2 stacks up against pack shed 1. 
So our lowest piece of data, our lowest value is a 3. So we put the 3 in. Our highest is 9. And our quartile 1 is also 3. So we've already put a mark in there for 3, so that just stays. Quartile 2 is 7. Quartile 3 is 8. And we simply put a line around that and a connector. Now in terms of symmetry of data we can see that this has no symmetry, it's asymmetrical. In fact it is highly negatively weighted. So you can see that while they sometimes perform as well as pack shed 1, they have this huge negative tail that's dragging them down. What I find interesting with this is based on this graph and on this measure of statistics we would determine that pack shed 1 is the better performing pack shed. Pack shed 2 is just too negatively weighted to compete. And here's what's really interesting about statistics. Mark Twain is right in one sense that you can use statistics to highlight key pieces of information and obscure key pieces. Uh, for example, if we wanted pack shed 2 to stick around, we might simply present measures of the middle. Uh, on the other hand, if we wanted pack shed 1 to stick around, we might use measures of range. However, it's about using the right tool for the right uh, purpose, and I think we need both of those pieces of data, and we need to be aware of how statistical methods can be used to represent data. So you can see here that uh, measures of the middle the mean, median and the mode are really meaningless without measures of range in which one is the interquartile range. Uh, this activity is great in the workplace. Uh, I think there's an example of it in the Thames Timber as well. Uh, really good activities and good ways for learners to begin to represent data. Now what is uh, of interest to us as well in the numeracy and literacy game is that uh, a lot of the graphs represented sorry, the graphs that are used in the online assessment tool use uh, the box and whisker graphs and the box plot graphs. Uh, they run them vertically, but uh, they're exactly the same graph and they're put together exactly the same way. And so you can see that uh, in this graph here we have quartile 1, quartile 2 and a quartile 3 and we can see where our median is immediately and we can also see where our outliers are, where, where our range is. In summary, uh, understanding how graphs represent data is vital and this is just one example of how you can get learners to uh, put data together and then represent it via different graphs, or in this case the interquartile range and the box plot graph. Uh, but exploring statistical techniques is really interesting and comparing how different techniques will represent the data uh, is always interesting to learners and to tutors as well and entirely appropriate for the workplace. Uh, part 4 is the final part that's coming up and it uh, addresses how you can present this information to learners and get them interested. Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.